Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Supposed Tunitin Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to. It's actually a video of a British family whom converts to Islam. And this video read that how my British family become um, Muslim. My dad Shahada story. It means that it's a video of a boy who converts to Islam and was able to say the message of islam to his um, parent his father and then they decide to want to embrace um islam so they are sharing the their revered um story all right so i believe that the video is going to be a very um interesting one so if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my facebook and instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys before we get on to the video i am a theologian and i make this video not to discredit anyone's thought or belief or even religion but this is basically for educational purposes and i believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from this so guys without any further ado let's get down to this video and check this out but before then guys Please, I may not be able to play the video from the beginning to the end, but then at some point I may pause and say whatever I need to say, then I'll drop the link, the original video, the link at the description button so you can go there maybe probably and watch the full um, video because it's too long and I know that some of you may not be able to watch it to an end. But then let's get down to it and then see what we can do before the end. So let's hear the man and the boy I'm story. I was into the same things that everybody else was in at those times. I was into girls and I was into drugs and that's the amazing thing. Islam is so powerful that even somebody with a small amount of information can overcome somebody. It just made me think right I've got to follow it and he said that's that's you're a Muslim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. How are you all? So today is a big one. It's a big day. I'm filming maybe the most important video I've ever made on my YouTube channel. Definitely the most anticipated one. I meant to make this video around five years ago when I filled my Q&A and I asked this question. If you want to know how to give a salamah, tell me in the comments. And there will be a video another, inshallah. Now that video got quite a lot of views and since then in the comments of literally every single YouTube video I've made afterwards, there's been at least one person and often way more than one person asking to see the story of how my parents became Muslim. Literally thousands and thousands of people have asked to hear this story. Now I've kind of held off on making it because I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to talk about it or frame it or film it. But today I'm finally with my dad. Here he is, he's sitting next to me. Are you ready dad? Are you nervous or how, how are you feeling? I'm nervous. I become a robot in these situations. He gets a little bit nervous to film videos. I've been I... doing this for some time. But we're finally here, we're ready. Bismillah, of course, you have to start with Bismillah. I think the first question to ask before anything is, how did you hear about Islam in the first place? I think that's a good place to start. Bismillah. <laughs> <laughs> Do I actually have to speak now? Yeah. This is now where I've got to speak. You have to speak After now. five years, this is actually where I've got to speak. It's right. time. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The very first time I heard about Islam, I was coming home from a friend's house and I got out of the car. There was somebody walking in front of the house and I recognized the person, but they kind of like looked different. So I stopped and I said, Jonathan, is that you? He said, yeah. I said, you look different. I couldn't put my finger on how he looked different, but he just looked different. He said, yeah, I become a Muslim. This was in Cardiff, right? Yeah, so this was in Cardiff. This was in about 1994. That feels like a long time to me. 19, like before 2000? Or... Because it was in like 1994, of course, you know, the, there was no internet. I'd never heard of anybody becoming a Muslim before, so it was totally weird. So I was like, why did you become a Muslim? And he said, come on, let's go and sit down and chat about it. So he actually lived just up the road. We walked up the road together and he started telling me about Islam. What did you even know about Islam before that? Because you said there was no internet, of course, no social media. Nowadays, we can really find out about stuff mm. so easily. Any topic you want, but back then, what do you have? Library or I, like, what did you even know about Islam? Books. Books. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, now people are becoming Muslim all the time. I'd seen Muslims everywhere. My mother used to look after a girl and I used to go down to the playground to pick her up sometimes. And I used to see women in niqabs. That's crazy. And, and back then, all that time yeah, ago? Yeah, back then, all that time, it was only in the, in the 1990s. But, okay. I'm not like to 500 me, years that's old. That's like my whole life. Yeah. times two 
But I'm saying even nowadays in, in Cardiff, like I've been to Cardiff, you don't see women in niqab that often. Yeah, so, so it's kind of crazy to me that there's... Um, I think they were people from like Saudi and Kuwait, mm. etc. So I saw them, but I'd never asked anybody about Islam. And I'd even, I had a friend who is a Muslim, his name was Salim Tharani. Hello Salim, if you're watching this. Hello, uh, hello Salim. Salams even. That was when I was really young, we, when we were like seven, eight years old. I didn't know even that he was a Muslim. Something had happened though, right? Which was when I was in the sixth form common room. Maybe pe people who are, aren't British might not know what a sixth form common room yeah, is. Yeah, so basically we take exams when we're 16 and then we take do two years and we do A levels, it's called sixth form, right? But anyway, I went into the sixth form common room and there was a crowd of people, they were all crowding around something. So as I went in, I was like, what is everyone doing? They said, oh, such and such a girl and she's brought in a Quran. Now I went to a church school, even though we weren't like, it wasn't like a really religious school, but it was counted as a church school. So I was kind of like, you know, I'm, I was too cool to say, oh, <laughs> can I have a look as well? So I didn't go and look, but I think that I had in myself that I wanted to know about Islam. I knew that the Quran was the book of the Muslims, but literally it stopped by there. So back to that day when you were like with your friend, you said you, said you were shocked or? Yeah, I was shocked because this is the first time that I realized that there's this other religion. They believe in the same God as me. They believe in Jesus. They believe in the same prophets as me. The only thing is, that I thought at that point was they believe like in another prophet after him. I thought it was this totally strange religion. So you're saying you didn't really realize sort of the similarities in that we believe in the same prophets and messengers that Christianity believes in, but we just believe in, in one extra on top of that in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think that's the thing that basically intrigued me were the similarities. So back then, were you like religious or re you're saying you were intrigued, but were you already religious or like? No, I wasn't religious, right? I wasn't religious. I was into the same things that everybody else was in at those times. I was into girls and I was into drugs and As drinking. Astaghfirullah. No, I'm just... You knew that already, you knew that already. But you know, I was into partying and going out and, and all those things. But at the same time, I used to believe in God. I used to go to church. I didn't used to go every week, but even like I used to take my, my parents to church. I used to encourage them to go to church. I used to feel, you know, like a religiosity. But you almost like weren't sure exactly where to put it maybe, or like how to act upon it. It wasn't that, it wasn't even that I wasn't sure. I was just too busy enjoying myself. So you had some level of religiosity, okay. But you said back to like the main story, you said you were talking to this guy and then you realized the similarities and you were intrigued. So like, what did you do with your intrigue? What did you do after that? So after that, every time I met a Muslim, I would debate with them. And then I would go back to my, my parents, I'd go back to my friends and I'd start kind of like debating with them. I was basically going back and forth, back and forth, trying to search for the truth but also trying to find kind of like mistakes in Islam and trying to find um, holes in Islam. It was during that period then as well, then I met a guy called Robin and somebody else called Hussein. They were the people who basically gave me a lot of dawah because I would go to, I had a girlfriend, I'd go to her house and her dad's friend was Robin. So I would sit with Robin and we would talk for hours and hours and hours. What would you like talk about with this guy, Robin? Robin didn't read much, it's so funny. It's not that he had like lots of information. He actually, he gave a translation of the Quran in English to my girlfriend's dad, who is an atheist, okay. and said, read this and tell me what's in it. He was a voracious reader. A voracious reader? Yeah. Voracious. That's like, I've never even heard that word I hope, in my whole life. I just hope that that word's right. Voracious. <laughs> so he didn't have lots of information, but it's, that's the amazing thing is that Islam is so powerful and it's so blatant and obvious and clear that even somebody with a small amount of information can overcome somebody. Like you said, you were trying to make a point to try and find holes. And even though he didn't even know that much, it was still sort of steadfast and obvious in front yeah. of you. Again, like what did you talk about exactly? Like what, what were you guys discussing for all that time? The fundamental thing was, how could Jesus be God? Obviously it just didn't make sense to me. And I'd thought about those things before, subhanAllah. Even when I was, when I remember being about six years old, when I was in, I went to a school called Glinko Junior School. And I remember we used to have these traveling acts that used to come in. It was almost like a circus, right? We used to have assembly and I remember you always used to sit around yeah, cross-legged. I, I remember, I, I was actually in the UK for one year. And I remember a big thing in the UK that they do is the assemblies. They'd always sing like these church Christian songs and stuff. And I remember I'd be like, 
to the teacher, teacher, I don't really want to be here. And I'd sit outside and I'd read my book. And it kind of became a thing with my classroom, like, oh, it's assembly time, Obed's going to go read his book. So as I was saying, I was, when I was six years old, this traveling circus thing came in. But basically, they were, they'd come in to tell us about Jesus. And I remember they did all these things and acrobatics and stuff or whatever. And then they had a message. They said to us, listen, children, all you've got to do is say, oh, Jesus, come into my life and you've got a paradise. So I remember going home that night. I remember sitting on my bed at night and I was like, okay, what am I supposed to do now? So I said, okay, oh Jesus, come into my life. Like I said it with my mouth. And I thought, is that it? Is that all I've got to do? And I said, well, they're adults. They know what they're talking about. I'm going to paradise now. That's it. It's all over. Even at that age, it's like, that just doesn't seem right. Like, how do you only have to say these few words and that's it, you're going to go to paradise. Oh Jesus, come into my life. So similarly, when I was debating with these people, I never obviously even thought about it. Having these discussions, it just made me actually think about it and think, how can Jesus be God? It didn't make sense to me. So therefore, I wasn't just debating with Muslims. I was also going to Christians. I'd go into my parents. I probably drove my parents mad. And this is the thing, nobody else really wanted to speak about it. Like my dad, were, I think was like, what are you even thinking about those things for? I remember it once when I, much later, I told him the thing about, you know, when I was six and this happened, and he was like, what was wrong with you? Like, why would you <laughs> even think about that at that age? You're weird. I just had this belief in God, and I don't know why, but alhamdulillah, Allah made me somebody who questioned. It, it didn't make sense because, like, how can God, the almighty, the all-powerful, the creator of heavens and earth, how could he be in a womb of a, of a woman? You know, and then he have to eat and he have to go to, he went to school with the other kids and you know, he learned about Judaism. How can that be God? That just didn't make sense to me. And then even if you look at the actual sayings of Jesus in the Bible, and I was doing these things, like I was looking at these things, I was looking at debates between Muslims and Christians and watching videos and reading books and stuff. And he used to bow down and he used to prostrate to God, etc. And so it didn't make sense, whereas, there's another narrative in the Bible, which is the narrative of Paul. And basically, I kind of came to this conclusion that Christianity wasn't the religion of Jesus. Christianity was, it was a Roman religion. It was like made up by Paul, who didn't even meet Jesus. And even if you look at the Bible, you'll find that he actually fell out with some of the, the disciples of Jesus. Like he f seems that he fell out with James. The religion I was upon was a Roman religion. So it wasn't it, like, it wasn't pure Christ Christianity. It was sort of something made by the Romans and, and Paul and all these people afterwards and sort of added on top of Christianity and sort of diluting what was the truth of the original scriptures and teachings of, of Christianity. That's what you're trying to say. Yeah, exactly. And when I looked at God in Islam, it just made total sense. And I just thought this is the religion of Jesus because Jesus worshipped God alone. It's that simple. And in Islam, God is all powerful, not just in Islam, in reality, God is almighty and all powerful. And he sent all of these prophets. He sent Moses, he sent Jesus, salam. he sent Abraham and Noah and Yusuf and all of the other prophets. And they all came with one message and it's so simple. Worship God alone. It's not that that was totally lost in the Bible if you looked at it. For example, Jesus would tell people to follow the commandments. And the first commandment is, don't worship anyone other than God. In the book of Exodus, it says, you shall have no other gods beside me. You should have no other gods beside me. How can I then say Jesus is God? Like that goes blatantly against the first commandment. And then it says in the second commandment that you should make no graven images of God. If Christians say that Jesus is God and they've got these graven images of them all over on a cross, etc., it just seemed to me, like I said, that if I want to follow Jesus, and I love Jesus, you know, the whole, the whole point of Christianity is about the love of Jesus. If I actually want to follow him, I can't follow this Roman religion anymore. But there is something important, which is the fact that I was like, maybe I've got it wrong. Because especially if your whole life you've been upon Christianity, your parents, your friends, basically the whole community around you, to then go and switch is sort of a big deal. Yeah, so because this is the weird thing, right? Islam just felt foreign. Christianity felt European. Mm. Because why? Because it was like Roman, yeah. right? And we're basically like Romans. And then once you're so far removed from that side of the world, you're in the UK, raining all the time, it's cold. I can understand why it would maybe feel a bit like that was something from, from the other side of the world than where you were from. 
and this is the weird thing is like, why did I not feel it about Christianity? Like they're, they're both from exactly the same place. So this was something that kind of like that I had to deal with in my own self. It wasn't just this discussion, right? I started seeing about the Quran. When I looked at the Quran, the Quran had been revealed to Prophet Muhammad over a period of 23 years. It was revealed bit by bit over 23 years and God had revealed it through the angel Gabriel in response to events. For example, people who come and ask Prophet Muhammad Sallam a question, some Quran was revealed. And this was like in the 600s. Prophet Muhammad Sallam was born around 570, right? Now, if you look at UK, in that period, in the, like the 7th century, we have basically virtually no writing from then. And yet you've got this book which had been 100% preserved, totally. And God had promised to preserve it. And that is one of the amazing things about the Quran, actually, when you think about it, is we're reading the exact same thing, words, right to the tashkil, the very letter that was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu all that time ago. Whereas, again, you said your thing with Christianity was... Well, that's a very interesting um, video, watching this very revered um, story of the father and then the son sharing their experience and of course um, some of the misconception you understand they were having about um, Christianity. But then I want to add up something you understand concerning what the father was saying that um, in Christianity for what he knows was like it was being believed that immediately you say that in a sense that Jesus Christ comes into my life then therefore you are automatically going to make it to paradise. I want to say that if you just invite Jesus Christ or accept Jesus Christ into your life without following and understand his commandment I will say to you that that very statement is wrong because in Christianity one safe one safe is not always safe okay do you get that I said that one safe is not always safe it means that if you accept Jesus Christ in a stand into your life by confessing your sin by forsaking in a sense your sin you accept him as your Lord and personal Savior is the first step it's a step not that it automatically what makes you to go to eternity so when you do that then it's been expected of you what to get baptized and aside from that after you get baptized you have to follow his commandment follow everything that he has said in a sense in the bible that is when maybe when you die then you may I'm not saying that you will, but you may able to make it to paradise through his mercy. But you just sitting down and just accept Jesus Christ in a sense into your, your life, right? And then you, you maybe probably in your previous life, you do drugs, you follow women, you go to clubbing, you do. I'm not saying that I've put myself in the positions of being a judge. But all I am saying is that while you do all those things, you are supposed to forsake all those things immediately the time that you accept Jesus Christ into your life. You are supposed to allow your past to become a past and not to return back in a sense to your past. If you have been taking pork, you stop taking pork. If you have been drinking, you stop drinking. If you have been smoking, you stop uh, smoking. If you have been stealing, stop stealing. If you have been fornicating, stop fornicating. If you have been committing adultery, stop committing adultery. There are so many things in Hassan that we do. Or if you have been doing things or taking things forcefully from people, just stop it. You can't be saying that in Hassan you are a Christian or because of in Hassan you have accepted into your life and you still go back and still be doing the same thing over and over and over again. No. You have to stop all those things as far as you accept Jesus Christ into your life. It's expected of people, in a sense, to see Christ in you. And that's why he says, in a sense, so that we should live our life in the sense that when people look at us, they are going to glorify our Father in heaven. They are not going to glorify us. They are not going to glorify the church we are going to. They are not going to glorify the pastor that, we, that is officiating that very church. But they are going to glorify our Father, which is God in heaven. And and how are you going to do that is by your actions is by your word is by your how you relate with people so all i'm trying to say is that what the father of the young man says in a sense is not true accepting jesus christ into your life alone is not enough to take you to eternity but you have to do his will you have to do what he has commanded us to do that is how that can be able to take you to heaven and then when it comes to um 
the first you understand commandment and then the second you understand commandment that people are misinterpreting you understand and then also about um jesus christ we know that in a sense as god have already stated in the second, the second command that we shall not make another image in place of him we know that in the back of our mind and we are not saying that jesus christ is another god we are saying that it is was God, in a sense, the Spirit of God, in a sense, who manifests in human flesh. Even the Quran, in a sense, actually acknowledged that, that Jesus was born miraculously and it was actually a Spirit of God. And then the Quran even accepts or even attests to this that, you understand, Mary gave birth to him without even having an interference with a man. It was just a spirit of God, just like how the spirit of God that was being used in a sense in creation that was talking about the spirit of God in a sense moving in a sense in the waters that is I'm making reference to Genesis. We could talk about the seven spirit of God that I was talking about in Revelation. All those things we are not saying that understand these are the spirit of God we are talking about. We are not saying that understand that it was um, another God that was moving in a sense on the surface of the waters. No. We are saying that it was the Spirit of God that manifests itself in us and in Mary, and then she gave birth to Jesus Christ. So we are not saying that Jesus Christ is a man. So Jesus Christ is not a man, is not in us and a prophet, just like how Islam in us then put it. So when you look at in us and some of those things in us, you realize that a lot of Christians to explain to us and I think that the error that some of us are doing is that maybe probably we do not really teach more about our religion so the little that people knows about it they think that in a sense they are Christians of course they are Christian because of they accept Jesus Christ in a sense into their life but then there is a way that you need to study you need to study the word of God and that's why I see Paul was say to turn up Timothy that word that you should study to show yourself in a sense approved because when we study how do you study you study by reading the word Word. and that is when you now get you understand faith that's when your create your faith you understand increases and that's why he said that the faith comes by what by hearing and hearing by what by the word of god so because of you understand they do not study the word they do not understand who god is and that is why you understand they make that very decision because they just felt like oh of course they just do this and then that's it they don't know that some of them will tell you they don't even know that they said the drinking of the alcohol is wrong or taking of the pork and understand is wrong whereas all those things have already been stated already in the Bible but because of maybe probably they do not do and maybe some of us in the same preachers may not really help in matters and then we normally talk more on prosperity you understand our ministry we don't really talk more about the word and then that's why I see people don't really understand more about the word and that's why after maybe probably they convert or whatever they do and then therefore they will say that oh they did not know it is like this even Jesus Christ himself, if he was not studying, then therefore the devil could have overcome him. Don't forget when he was baptized and then the Spirit of God took him in a sense to the wilderness where he fasted for 40 days, 40 nights. After in a sense, he finished his fasting, what happened? The devil came you know, someone to, to tempt him. And then everything that Jesus Christ is saying, he used in a sense, the Bible, he used the word you understand, to counter him. And that's why he was saying that it is written because when he says that turn the stone in a stand into bread, he said it is written that thou shalt not live in a stand by bread alone, but the word that proceeds from thy mouth. So, how do you think the word in a stand will be proceeding? It is when you study that's when the word of God in a stand begins to manifest in a stand in your life. So, all I'm saying is that it's not true for some of the things in a stand they are saying in a stand concerning in a stand Christianity in the Bible because we do not say that Jesus Christ in a stand is another God, we are saying that it was God in a stand incarnate that's all you understand we are saying so maybe probably you should allow us Christians to be able to explain to us you understand what you understand our God means nevertheless all I can tell you you understand is that we both the Christian and the Muslim you understand we all worship you understand the same God because at the end of the day you understand we just believe you understand in God and I want you to understand that we are not saying that Jesus is another God and the Spirit of God is also another God. No, we are saying that what it is one God. That's just all you understand we are saying. I'm just trying to want to correct this narration. And then if you look at it in a sense critically, maybe probably you as a Muslim ask yourself, how do you think in a sense God comes and then he spoke to Moses and then sent him to go and save the children of the Israelites? Ask yourself, how do you think in a sense it is written in a sense in the Quran? Where was God when he spoke to Mo Moses? Is it not written that God met him in the bush? Is it not also so in the Quran? 
so how can you say that so how can some of you feels like uh, so God cannot be in the heaven and then also be in the bush so what do you think happened in that situation you see so so many occurrences in the sun has happened and then to the Jews right if you look at it in the sun how the Ten Commandments in the sun was given to Moses at Mount Sinai so if you look at it in the sun how was the mountain does it mean that in the sun that Moses go to heaven how do you think he was able to have the encounter with God and why do you think in a sense the Bible was um, even the Quran let me even use the Quran why do you think in a sense some of the narration was talking about that the light was so bright that Moses could not even see so where do you think God was so how can you say that in a sense God cannot come in a sense to this very end by saying that how can you say that's a bit based on the father saying that how can you say that in a sense God come was given birth to a woman like live inside a woman how can you say he went to school how can you say he eat some of them say how can you say he go to the toilet no even in the Quran, if you study the Quran very well, you got to realize that, you understand? This is how it is. And then some of you be bragging and saying that, oh, the Quran is preserved. Of course, we are fully aware, just like how he says, you understand, in Quran chapter 4, that it was God, it was him who preserved it. Else otherwise, they could have corrupted. But then, I am not saying that Christians should even make an attempt to corrupt, you understand, the Quran. No, they should not, you understand, do that. But then don't forget, what do you think, you understand, Ottoman uh, Caliph, you understand, did? concerning the Quran. Why do you think in a sense that he burned some of the manuscript of the Quran? Why? Because of that's what in a sense he did that time in a sense as the caliph in a sense of Islam. So since he do so so other copies in a sense we are not there. Right? But before then was it like that? You see some of those things. I'm not saying that in a sense of course because at the end of the day it was God that still make it in a sense possible through the caliph. Right? So let's not make it, and then probably don't be surprised that some of them in a sense could not be, could not know maybe some of this information before some of them was even believing that oh, if we should talk about in a sense Allah, then how was he? And then try to look at in a sense his attribute, and that's why you see some section of the Muslim as of that time, some of them we are of opinion that Adam actually have an ancestors. If you make a research, you will see some of these things. But it does not mean that in a sense for us to feel like because me I still believe in the, that the Quran is actually the word of God and Prophet Muhammad is actually in a sense a messenger from God. I believe that even though I am in a sense a Christian. But that's why you see these are the kind of the errors that some of the Christians we are doing that is making a lot of Muslims to convert to Islam. Why? Because of your stereotyping and saying things that are not true. And I'm just advising that don't do this kind of error that some of the Christians have made. Because this is what, in a sense, the result will end up being. But then, it's actually a very interesting video. I hope that some of us have learned a lot as far as this video is um, concerned. And I know that some of you have told an opinion concerning this, concerning some of the things in a sense, that I'm saying. And I know a lot will not even agree with me. But then, I want to see your thought and opinion at the comment section. And may God bless you as you do so. So, this is the end of my video. If you like my reaction, you like, share, and subscribe. If you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section. And I'm going to check it out. So, guys, you remain blessed. And I see you in my next video. Bye-bye.